Hi everyone, my name's Kim and um, welcome to my channel. This um, week I'm going to discuss um, what I'm currently wearing, what's on my sewing table at the moment, other projects that I have finished, purchases that I have made followed by my sewing plans going forward. So first of all let's start with what I'm wearing today. So today is um, this combination is what I would normally wear uh, at the weekend. I, I worn it out today uh, when I had a coffee in town and um, I wear it with uh, black tights and boots and it's quite a nice combo. So um, I was going to stand up so you can see. So to start with I've got this scarf. This is shop bought so I shall put that aside. And this is my tennis jacket. Uh, my black tennis jacket and it's, it's stretchy and it's snug and it's really lovely and I would generally only wear this in the summer because I it's a bit I made it a bit too small so I can't really do it up um, as you can see it's very snug um, but it goes great over dresses that you don't have to do up so this is the the dress I've made and now you can probably understand why I titled um, the video with is it too pink this is um, a triple crepe fabric and this pattern is the style arc Patricia Rose so you can see it has um, it has a v-neck it has a little front flap here and it has a really nice pleat in the front. It has long sleeves which just come a little bit short to the wrist. I didn't follow the pattern um, on the sleeves because it had a little, a little fold up on the sleeves. So I didn't bother with the fold. I just literally let it sort of go nearly full length and I just sewed and hemmed here. It has the fabric at the back is just literally straight from the neck all the way down to the hem. It has no zip and it has pockets. So it is a really nice dress. I've made this dress um, three times and I'm sure through the process of future videos you'll, you'll see the other Patricia Rose dress, dresses that I've made. Now this is a style arc pattern and as we all know with style arc their instructions aren't very detailed so this pattern came together quite quickly. The only thing I struggled with a little bit was, was the flap at the front but I got there and I like it so much I did actually make um, another two of these. Uh, and they are so nice to wear, especially at this time of wear, time of year, because it's November. It's quite cold and wet, and um, it's quite nice to wear with heavy, you know, heavier denier tights and boots with a jacket or a coat on. It's really nice. On its own, sometimes I think it's probably a little bit too pink, but with a jacket and a scarf, it tones it all down. So it. it it's quite nice and I quite like the brightness of the pink though when I when I selected the fabric from the site so I got the fabric from um, Croft Mill they do some beautiful um, triple crepes in lots of lovely colors and when I viewed this on online when I bought this it I thought it looked pink but actually when it arrived it was more um, fuchsia than pink but um, it still works it's, it's lovely because if it because it is a triple crepe it's a heavy crepe so it drapes beautifully and it doesn't crease it doesn't crease at all actually it's a really nice fabric to make a dress of this type because there's not lots of detail on it um, and it just has a really, really nice feel. And also this time of year, because it's a thicker crepe, it's quite, it's quite warm. So um, that's that's what I'm wearing. Um, now, on my sewing table at the moment, I am making myself a blouse. Now, I discussed this last week because I did buy some fabric from 
a company called Stitch Fabrics who are based in London and they had some really lovely cotton fabric which I thought would look really nice for a shirt for my husband for Christmas so I liked it so much I bought enough to make him and myself a shirt so I'll put a little image of the, the fabric up but you'll, you can see it now because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the shirt that I started so it's not finished so it is basically um, I would say about three quarters finished so you can see you can see the fabric is a little um, man in a boat with a fish at the end of his line and I just thought it was quite a nice unisex fabric um, so I decided I would start off with my shirt because I thought if my husband came in and saw what I was doing because I'm trying to do it as a surprise for him for Christmas that if he came in and asked what that was I could say that I was making myself a shirt and um, funny enough when we were out today having a coffee he did say to me that that shirt you're making it's quite it's quite a manly pattern <laughs> So um, I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, I thought, well, I thought, well, I like it. I thought, oh. okay, but I thought at least he knows it's this isn't for him. He can see this is a woman's shirt. But when he comes in the future, he probably won't take any notice of any fabric. You know, this fabric that I'm sewing up. So I will be able to make his shirt without him actually um, noticing. So that is the next um, project on my, my list. But this one's going really well. So this style... Um, this pattern is um, BB, no, B5526 and I use this pattern a lot. It's a princess seam, so it's got the princess seam um, down the middle, uh, down the sorry, sides going across the bust. It's such a nice fit. I do recommend you give it a go because it is such a nice fit um, and it's also... Um, it's one of my favourite and I've probably made a dozen of these at least and sometimes when I lose my sojo uh, to get me back into my sewing mood I will generally go and make one of these because I know how to make them quickly and they sew up so nicely and they're always a nice fit and um, I always get quite excited when I finish one of these because I know it's going to look good but that's on my sewing table at the moment and that should be finished hopefully I'll get that finished this weekend and I can start on my husband's um, so the next thing on my list to talk to you about are my my other finished projects now as you know I don't just sew I also do quite a bit of hand sewing um, but that's been put on hold at the moment because I'm still waiting for my Queen of Diamonds um, subscription block of fabrics to come and I'm expecting them in early December so we've still got quite a way to go until they arrive so what I've been doing is I've been working on my my knitting projects and I do have a few I do have a few socks that were part finished so I'd only done one of the pair uh, so this week I've been working on finishing the second part of the pair so this is one of them. So, I, tell, I was looking at these on the video the other day and I thought they make my feet look huge. My feet aren't really that huge. I mean I, I'm, I'm five foot seven and I do have a, a size seven foot but I think it's these these blocks stretch them out and they also when you put them in the wash they do shrink slightly. Um, so that's a finished sock. Anybody who knits is thinking of knitting socks I would definitely say don't try to avoid knitting with black I, when I was finishing these off oh knitting in black in the in the evenings these sort of darker evenings was a real nightmare I dropped a few stitches and it, they took me quite a bit to finish because I kept on dropping stitches because I'm always watching telly as well so I forget you know I, don't, I lose my concentration and this is the a second pair so I don't know if you can see them so these have got a nice sort of leaf pattern on them and um, they finished up quite nice uh, and I'm really pleased with those. So they're finished. So I've got a pair, pair each of those now. So they will go in, in the wash and they will, will shrink up enough to make them, make them look sort of nice and um, nice fitting on the foot. 
but as I said last week definitely do not tumble dry your handmade socks you know I've done that a few times uh, so they're my finished socks um, so carrying on from there I'm going to talk to you about my purchases so I have been thinking about future sewing plans for Christmas and as mentioned in my video last week my son said that he wanted me to make him two hoodies so I have actually been doing a bit of research because I made the Style Arc Kennedy hoodie that was the first hoodie that I'd ever made and I made that out of fabric that I had in my stash and the fabric was quite thin and so I started to research different uh, like hoodie fabrics and I found that there are they the best weight to use is generally around 260 GMS um, which is grand square square meter um, or and it goes up to 360 GMS uh, and they're usually between 70% cotton and 30% polyester so I was doing a bit of research and what I've done is I have requested samples from a few fabric companies so I can just have a look to see what this jersey fabric looks like and how it feels and stretches and as yet it hasn't it hasn't arrived so I'm hoping to get that shortly um, because I want to start these hoodies but I did buy the pattern so I will put an image up so you can see it properly so this was the um, Berda pattern 6718 and it has a, a very basic hoodie which has obviously the hood it has raglan raglan sleeves and it has the the kangaroo pocket in the front so it's a really straightforward hoodie my son didn't want anything too fussy he said you know that's great and he wanted one in black and one in navy and i must admit when i was looking at this pattern i i thought this one here was quite nice because i'm because I wear, when I'm out, I wear a um, handbag that goes, a crossover handbag, which goes across the body. I find sometimes if I have a hoodie on, the hoodie that I just made, the hood, the hood part of it annoys me because I'm having to try and pull it out from not just underneath my handbag strap, but also from underneath my jacket. And um, I just thought this, this other pattern here, which doesn't have the hood, I'll show you this one here which doesn't have the hood it has more like a tunnel neck I thought well, that would be quite nice wouldn't mind making that for myself but um, I have to try and keep focus because obviously I have some sewing plans that I need to complete before Christmas and I do have a terrible habit of going off and on tangent and doing things I need to make sure that what I've promise I'm going to complete before Christmas that I do so keep focus right so as well as buying that pattern I did actually also buy another pattern I don't know why I bought it but I just I just I just thought it was really nice so I will put another image so you can see it up close and it is just a straightforward blouse pattern it's nothing special but it's just I just like the detail on the neck because it just had some little pleats at the top of the fabric and it just fell and I thought that would be, would be quite nice because at this time of year when it's colder I do wear lots of scarves so it's pointless having some fancy neckline but it would be quite nice to be able to maybe wear something that's plain with a scarf and it's up to neck so it obviously keeps you know your um, chest warm with, along with your scarf so I thought yeah that's quite nice and it looks looks straightforward so I thought I'll I'll give that a go maybe if I have time before Christmas I might uh, do it before Christmas if not it's one of those next year projects so whilst I'm um, ordering samples of hoodie fabric for my son I also looked into um, 
buying some proper eyelets for the hood and also buying some hood, hoodie cord. So I did buy some um, eyelets and um, I bought these from the trimming shop. So, but I was hoping that they would be a bit, a bit wider on um, the surround but they're they're not but uh, I will I'll practice a little bit on some fabric to see what they look like but I've ordered a little hole punch so I can punch out the fabric because I, I thought I would be able to do it about the hole punch but I don't think I will be able to do it and um, along with those eyelets I bought a uh, eyelet die set now these die sets go into the green machine. Now some of you are probably thinking, what, what's a green machine? The, the green machine is one of these. Oh. And the die effectively goes in here. So this die set that I bought will go in there. And once the hole has been made in the fabric, then you can put your eyelet um, grommets into the green machine, press them down and it seals um, the eyelet quite firmly. Um, now I, I used um, I, I used a die set when I was making my corduroy a tennis jacket because I bought some jean buttons and uh, the reason why I bought the die set for jean buttons was because when I made my, my black denim jacket, I bought some screw-in um, jean buttons off of Amazon and I did find that every so often one of them would be gone. Um, so I thought what I would do is when I make, made my next jacket, I would buy a proper die set and some proper jean buttons. And I did that. And on my green jacket, they work perfectly. I mean, they're not cheap, but I do intend to use um, them quite a bit. I only buy them if I know I'm going to use them quite a bit. So um, I know I will use jean buttons because they're always going to come in useful going forward and I do like the Atenas quite a lot I mean I do talk about it a lot and I've made two so far and I do have plans to make more as I go along because I'm getting the 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 fit of the jacket right so um and it's quite a favorite now aren't they all god <laughs> right so um as I was saying, I, I bought the eyelet, so I, I've got some of those. And I, I have actually bought some, some other eyelets, but they haven't come yet, so I'll show you those next week. I just wanted to see whether they were whether they were any different. But I did buy some hoodie cord. Now I bought I bought this orange hoodie cord because I did think if I was gonna make myself another hoodie, I wouldn't mind making a, a bright orange one. So this hoodie cord, um it's quite nice because at the ends it has this clear plastic and you see it's just a little shiny so it's clear plastic so the ends are sealed and it, and it is quite long and when I was looking at it I thought god maybe that that will be too too long but I thought if I did need to trim it back and I would only do this once I've tried it in the hoodie to see how it feels um, but if I needed to trim it back, I would probably cut in the middle and just sort of take out the middle section and reattach it. And then that bit would be actually hidden in the hood. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll give that a go. So because my son wanted a black and a navy blue hoodie, I bought... Um, one in black, so the, that's the same hoodie cord as the orange. Um, so I've got nice clear ends, and um, it's just a nice. It's just round, and it's got a quite quite a nice feel to it, um, which is different from the flat cord that I used in the 
Kennedy hoodie that I made um, a few weeks ago um, that was flat cord and I just wanted to find some of this round cord to see how how different it was and I quite like it actually uh, and I bought this from a company called Neo Trim I put the details um, below so you can go and have a look if you want to and yet again this is this is quite long so if you needed to shorten it I think you could probably do that with no problem so I've got the cord for his hoodie so that's good and I've got the eyelets for his hoodies that is good and all I need now is to wait for the sample hoodie fabric to come through and depending on which one feels I've got a feeling that they're all going to be basically the same they've all got that same um, weight they're all made up of either 70 30 percent cotton versus polyester or 65 35 cotton polyester so there's not really that much difference I just want to sort of have a look and see um, what they're like though saying that the price of some of these doesn't vary quite a bit so um, I'll make a decision once those little swatches come through okay so uh, what else have I been up to yeah so that's all my purchases so my my sewing plans going forward are um obviously i need to finish off my well i need to finish off my blouse i need to start and finish my husband's shirt and i have to make an adaptation to that and um as i mentioned before i have found a way to do it and I will show you how I do that when I come to his shirt. I'm going to do a bit of experimenting so you will see that. And as well as that, I need to do the two hoodies for George. So I need to get those finished. And um, I, I feel quite positive because I know there's still quite a few weeks now to go till Christmas uh, and I have all of the fabric to make mine and my husband's shirt. I've ordered the buttons for them so when they come through I'll show you those. I'm doing something different with the buttons so I'm just hoping that will work. I've got the cord and the eyelets for my son's hoodie so I just need to get the fabric. So basically I do feel a little bit more in control of my makes and um, and the reason for that is because of my my project sheet that I use because I make notes as I go along as you know and I know some of you have been patient waiting for me to put it as a downloadable pdf and I did that on my last video though it did take me a while to figure out how to do it so I'm hoping that you'll have access to to that and I will also put it in the description on this video and I will probably put it on all of my videos going forward so you have it if you want to use it um yeah please do it's there for you um so i think this week i am finished but i just want to say there's a little bonus video coming up and i'm just trying to figure out how to do a voiceover and once I've done that, I will upload it for you and um, you can watch it. I've been working on it um, and editing like mad. And um, so keep an eye out. And that's something extra to look forward to. Very Christmas based. You'll love it. So I'd just like to say thank you for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it'd be lovely if you could, could subscribe. And I will see you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye.